How's it going, everybody? My name is Avery, and this is the sixth episode of our series where we're making a game using Go and Raylib. We're going to be working on the tile map stuff today, and we're not going to finish up all of it. Well, we're going to finish up all the basic stuff for it. And as you can see, this is what we're going to have by the end of this video. There's all of our tile set loaded in, and we have this little map or island with some tiles. So let's just jump right into that. I wanted to go over a quick concept. Let's uh, pull up this. Okay, it's already open. So let's imagine we have an array, just a bunch of numbers. And let's say this array is a one dimensional array. As you can see, it's just a list. And let's say it keeps track of our map. I guess we're going to do the tile mapping. But we know a map is two, um, 2D. I mean, it's a grid. So instead of having a 2D array that keeps track of the X and Y coordinates, we're just going to have it all out on here. So let's say the first row is taken down and set right here. The second row is taken and set right there. And then it just continues. So they're all just flattened out into a one dimensional array. So what are we going to do to figure out parts, um, locations, in case we have the map width. So there's the width right here, and there's a height. So knowing the width and height, we can figure out the location within this. So let's say we know zero is right here. So that's going to be the top right, my bad, top left of the map. And we know the very end is going to be the top right. And basically, let's say we're on a for loop and we have a single number, just call it i, and that i is in here. If you want to figure out where it is, we can do i um, modulus the width, and that's going to give us the x coordinate, and you get the y coordinate, you do i divided by the width, and that'll get you y. That's everything we should need. This right here is just going to figure out how wide it is, um, where the y i is, based on the width, and this is going to figure out which row it's in. Because in case you know, there's the width is five, and our number is ten. If we divide ten by five, we know that we're in the second row. And then if we were also to do ten by modulus five. We're going to get 5. So we're going to be in the second row, and we're going to be at 5. So I hope that's kind of easy to understand. Uh, we're going to actually use it in the code, and you'll be able to see how it actually works for everything. Also, a different thing to note is that... Um, let's pull this up is that in our resources that we've downloaded, let's look at the tile sets, there's individual images for each one of these. So for getting started, we're just going to look at the grass image. And if you pull this up, that's the size of the image, 160, but not all of them are this size. But each single tile is 16 by 16 pixels. So not only for the map, but we're going to want to figure out which tile we're looking at. So we can call this one tile 1, tile 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way down here, and then it'll just move on. So this one will just be after this one. And we're starting off at one because we want zero to be an empty tile. Even though we do have these empty tiles right here, but we want empty tiles because not all of these have empty tiles. Like if we look at the water, they're not empty. Um, one thing that's a little bit complex about this is I don't want us to edit the images because I think that'll make it a little bit too difficult for everyone to follow along with. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a, ma a map text file that has all of the coordinates numbers, which say which tile it should go to. As we were saying, that was 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and whatnot. And we're also going to have saying which one of these files that that number correlates to. And we can actually go ahead and hopefully it's easy 
to understand some of this. So we're going to want to load in some more textures. Let's make a space in between this one. And actually, we're not going to use all of them yet, so I'm not going to load them in because Go is going to have a problem with some of that. But down here, we can keep some track of some tile things. So tile dest is going to be a rectangle. So this is where we're going to draw the tile onto the screen. Tile source will be a rectangle as well. So this is the source from the image. So what part of the image that we're looking at. And we'll do tile map int like that. So this is going to be our one dimensional array that we were just looking at in here. That's this right here. And we can also do source map. And we'll call this a string. And the source map is basically just going to be like a tile map, except this is going to say what type of tile it is. So we're going to say look at the grass file or look at the house file. So it's going to keep track in here. And we can do map width and map height and integer, just like that. In our draw scene, we have our player drawn right here. So we're going to want to draw the ground below him. So we have to do it before him. We can go ahead and comment this one out. And in here, we can loop through our tile map. I'm going to do I and I of length of tile map and I plus plus and in here we're gonna actually check and see what we're looking at and we can draw them as well we can also make sure it's not empty so if tile map I does not equal zero because as I said zero is the empty space basically now we can do tile destination dot X equals tile destination dot width and we haven't assigned width yet but we'll get to that in a minute in float 32 we just have to make sure it's the right type of number a variable and it's going to be i modulus map width as we were looking at just a minute ago and then tile dest y equals tile dest dot height times float 32 i divided by map width and so this is width and that's height, but these are both width. Just to make sure you notice that. And in here we can draw our texture. We'll just do RL source dot x equals tile source dot width times float thirty two and tile map i minus one. Yeah, it's the same thing because we're starting off at 1 instead of 0. And then int, and it's going to be, we'll just do grass right for right now. That's all we have. Dot width divided by int 32 of tile source dot width. And then this right here should close off with two more parentheses like that. And this is tile source.x. We can copy that for the y as well. So tile source y and then this will be height and this right here should remain the same. That'll be division. So this is the same thing as this up here. This is figuring out where in the screen it's supposed to be drawn and this is figuring out where in the image it's pulling from. Then we just do RL draw texture pro just like what's down here. Um, we can actually copy this and let's say Grass sprite and tile source and tile destination and this one can be tile destination and tile destination and we'll just leave it like that and that should be most of what we need for drawing it so we're just looping through it we're making sure that something that needs to be drawn zero doesn't need to be drawn and then we're getting the x and the y for where it draws and the x and the y of from where it draws. So this is from the image and this is on the screen. But now we actually need to create a map basically. And we also need to set some of the tiles. So down here in our init, we can do some of that. Let's do it 
let's break this bar right here. Let's do it right here. We'll do tile dust equals rl dot new rectangle zero zero that's from the starting point and then 16 by 16 is the size and then the tile source can be the same thing rl new rectangle and we'll have it zero zero and 16 16 so the source needs to be 16 16 because that's the size of it in the image the destination you can change in case you want it to be bigger but later on we're going to look at zooming in some stuff that we mentioned last time and now we can also load in a map so we'll call load map and this is a function we can create right here. So func load map. And this is just going to push in some stuff into our array basically. So we can do map width equals 5, map height equals 5, and we'll just do 4i is set that to 0. This i is this of so map width times map height, just like so. And I plus plus. Let's close it off. And then here we can actually push in some stuff. So tile map equals append tile map I or tile map one. So let's just try running this and see if there's any sort of bugs. Okay, unidentified. So let's go to 44 up here. So this is I. Okay, so that just needs to be like that like you did with the other one okay and here's a 5x5 five five map using the number one tile in the grass file hopefully today's video was informative and it was useful for you guys we're going to be finishing up most of the tile mapping stuff in the next video which was all recorded together so that should be out already so go ahead and check that out bye